What surprised you about his whole story? Because it, it's quite an unlikely tale for a you know a kid from rural Ireland to somehow manage to wrangle all the stars yeah. of Hollywood into going along with what he wanted them to do. Yes, I, I would say it's just in, in addition to his illness and his healing through the intercession of a blessed mother, I would say the most remarkable dimension of his life that impressed me was his ability to uh, take advantage of the mass media to um, to get all of these Hollywood personalities, these famous stars that we all knew about being Crosby, mm -hmm. Young, and all of that. So that and uh, combined with his um, his use of of uh, the mass media to uh, almost as a, a loudspeaker for the messages that he was promoting about the about uh, the family and about uh, the the need for family prayer and the rosary as the basis for a healthy home life, a happy, healthy, and holy from home life. So. Yes, I would. I would say, I I found. Um, you know, I was thinking about this because I knew we were going to in, have this interview, and I was yeah. a few points about that that he's a marketing genius, that um, that that he never yeah. had any training in that. So he's just um, a native uh, natural uh, <laughs> marketing genius. But I, I do think he was a genius. I. Some of the points I have, I have here is that he he used innovative and effective approaches in the promotion of all of his uh, his uh, religious and social causes, uh, and he was effective in creating memorable slogans. And whether it was someone else that created, it, like mm -hmm. uh, a Hollywood copywriter, he he uh, latched onto those, saw the power, and they they really did sum up his uh, his work it encapsulated all of it so uh it's a simple yet powerful message it's the essence of uh when when we say the family that prays together stays together i he he uh, used that over and over again and it's it's been it's been uh, mentioned now pope john paul ii mentioned it in his official um uh Proclamation on the Rosary in uh, 2002 with the with the Apostolic Exhortation. He, mm -hmm. he, um, uh, he uses those very words, and and I heard him in New York too. By the way, the Pope uh, he in 1995, I believe it was at St. Patrick's Cathedral. He he was leading the Rosary, and and he said, you know, as that uh, uh, famous uh, American. Apostle of the Family Rosary, Holy Cross Father Patrick Payton always said, "The family that prays together stays together." And it was just uh, it was brilliant. I was sitting there in the in the in the church saying, "Wow, this is amazing. This is the great John Paul." And he's he really was a master of using the mass media for uh, for social outreach. In the forties and fifties, he used radio. Mm -hmm. emerging, emerging at the time to broadcast his messages, reaching vast audiences, especially through that long-running family theater of the air. Uh, later, he embraced television and produced popular seasonal programs for Easter and Christmas in the times when, when all of the major networks had to provide free uh, sustaining time as a community service. And he also he ventured into film. He saw the 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 power of celebrity endorsements to, mm -hmm. to um, uh, help. So Bing Crosby and Loretta Young, uh, Lucille Ball, Gregory Peck, are just a few of the many people that- Jimmy uh, Stewart. Yes. Jimmy Durante. I think of all the Jimmys. Jimmy Cagney, <laughs> Shirley Temple. Yeah. <laughs> uh, even, uh, <laughs> yes, even Raymond Burr, who was Ray not- Catholic. That's think, right. Did more programs with Father Peyton than than any other actor, mm -hmm. male or female, and they give a certain cachet and glamour to his campaign uh, for family prayer, and they enhanced the, the appeal of his programs, and they reached increasingly large audiences. His marketing can be used just for greed, for for you know for selling products and all of that, 
Uh, he was using it, I think, for the most noble person at all, uh, reason at all. That is, that is to to uh, enrich the the lives of uh, people spiritually. To eventually, eventually, it comes down to just one thing: we want to get to heaven, and we want to bring as many people as we can with us. And I, I Father Peyton, always, always had that as as the the raison day the reason why he did anything i i wouldn't say that eloquence was his his gift but his his uh presence and i i'll just base it on this uh, when when he was celebrating his golden jubilee in 1991 it was here on the campus at stonehill in the chapel and and i heard him it's the only time i heard him tell the whole story with such sincerity from his birth in Atty Mass and growing up in that rosary praying family and and then coming to America and going to Hollywood and all of that. And 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 in the end he said, I'm just Mary's donkey. Uh, to me, um, uh, to hear to hear him tell the whole story uh, was one of the great gifts of my life to to uh, be in the presence of a living saint. I had no training at all, but I but I did like movies and I knew about Father Peyton. So um I and and I, and at the time they said, you know, since Father Peyton died in 1992 to 2000, we've gone through six different uh personalities who have gone out to family theater and one after another they after 9 months or a year they're saying, "Oh, please let me go to the missions." <laughs> It's kind of unusual work for for a, a, a priest, and uh, yeah. and yet when I, when I got there in two thousand, I, I determined that I was going to read um, thoroughly Father Peyton's uh, autobiography, all for her. And her and would be Mary, of course. Mary, yes. And 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 it was that he would. It was not the focus on self. It was mm -hmm. on her and the mission that was entrusted to him. And uh, you know, I I loved that. I I think, uh, you know, I love these words: humble, hungry, and smart. I think a real leader has to have those qualities, and I would say he really had those. He was a a, a truly humble man, and and hungry for uh, uh, for doing this work. Uh, our our founder, Father, the founder of Holy Cross, Father Moreau. I used to say the 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 good Holy Cross religious leaps out of bed in the morning as though the bed is on fire. And I think because you're on fire with the mission that God has entrusted to you. So Father Peyton is that. He was hungry always to do more, to do better, to create, to innovate. And, and then smart, like there are few people who could be as winsome and charming and engaging as Father Peyton. With all of these Hollywood actors, but with so many, like so many, uh, just average people who just they remember meeting Father Peyton, and that he made them feel as though not only were they the only person there, but that God was present there in that in, in encounter, and they loved it and they remember it. In the summer of 1991, like many young actors, I was confused about what I should be doing. I wasn't sure if I should continue pursuing a profession that each day seemed more and more unreachable. I'm driving down Sunset Boulevard, lost in my thoughts, I saw a sign in one of the seedier parts of town. The sign read, The family that prays together stays together. Those words and the picture of the rosary on the billboard touched me. I went up to the front door of the building attached to the sign, and I knocked. After several minutes, an old priest, frail, very frail, and looking very ill, came to the door. I said, will you hear my confession? He was obviously fatigued, bruised from battling age and infirmity, but he was obedient to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. He welcomed me in, even though that I am sure he didn't feel like it. 
After hearing my confession, he said, Young man, there are big things in store for you. And he urged me to pray more and to attend Mass more frequently. From that time on, I started getting up early and tried to go to the Mass each day. I finally did break into the business, followed my passion, did a few films, and more than a decade later, my manager, Beverly Dean, started bugging me about going to see a priest she knew, a man by the name of Father Willie Raymond. He was a priest of the Holy Cross who was running the family theater. So I went to his office, parked in the back, signed a few autographs, and was on my way out when I saw this picture of this old priest in the entryway. He looked familiar. I said, I know this man. I told Father Willie, I know this man. I have been here before. He heard my confession. Father Willie Raymond informed me that the man in the picture, the man who had heard my confession so many years ago, was the legendary Father Patrick Payton, the founder of Family Theater. Father Payton's wise counsel to me that summer in 1991 was the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Had I not heeded his advice, my life might have turned out very differently. He said that really was a life-changing encounter with Father Payton and at, at the time. And he, um, I, I would say, um, you know, Jim said a lot, he can be very dramatic, you know, <laughs> but he's... Uh, he really is deeply, deeply faith-filled and, and committed to the faith. Um, he is, <laughs> I, I don't, you know, he, he's got his own, his own uh, way of uh, sharing the faith, but he's, he, he really does inspire a lot of young people in Hollywood, a lot of people all around the, yeah. the country. Um, I, I, you know, just uh, by way of summing up, I would, I would say, uh, Venerable Patrick Payton's status as a marketing genius rests upon is attributed to his ability to craft compelling messages with his team, to leverage mass media effectively, to engage influential figures such as stars and popes, and employing innovative fundraising techniques. He left an enduring legacy that continues today to impact people globally, his grit and his determination, combined with his forward-looking uh, approach to communications and his outreach, distinguishes him as a remarkable figure in the realm of religious marketing. So truly, he was a natural genius in marketing since he had no formal training in, in this at all. Father Payton came of age at a time when church media and religious media was easily folded into the mainstream. That went away fairly early in Father Payton's life. Um, by the 1960s, there you had religious media that was produced just for a religious audience, and you had mainstream media that was basically just for mainstream audiences, which includes the faith audience as well. You start to see that coming back together in, in the early, in the mid-2000s, mainly, frankly, because of the production of Passion of the Christ which finally again said to mainstream distributors and studios, there's an audience for faith content. I think that we've been able to do what Father Peyton did in that we have been able to tell beautiful, great stories that reflect our Catholic values, and we've been able to take them to the mainstream where there's the greatest chance that people will find them, that people will enjoy them, and that people's hearts will be opened and touched. It's a minor miracle that any film gets made. Uh, by people who are advanced and skilled and experienced in the industry. I'm amazed at what Father Peyton did with sheer drive, ingenuity, and relentless uh, pursuit of a project. I'm inspired by that. Um, I, we, I have a very capable and well-trained staff. We've been to film school. We've made films. We, we still make films. But, it, but ultimately, to get a film made, you still need 
the desire, the belief that you have a great story to tell, and just endurance and fortitude in doing all the things that you need to do and then taking all the steps that it takes to produce a movie and get it distributed and put it in front of people. From all of us at Family Theater Productions, we invite you and your family to be part of praying the family novena celebrating the birth of Venerable Patrick Payton.